welcome to another informative episode of the AWS Cloud Practitioner exam question series on Exam Tricks and Tips channel. Please like, share and subscribe to get regular updates on new episode releases. Let's get started. Welcome to episode 11. I'll be covering questions 66 to 70 in this episode. Let's start. Question number 66. A company is storing sensitive information in an Amazon S3 bucket. The company wants to protect the data from accidental deletion or overwriting. Which S3 feature should the company use to meet these requirements? Please read the question, go through the options, and try to figure out the correct answer. Hope you've done that. So here is the markup. So the key information here is uh, the company wants to protect the data and would like to avoid accidental deletion or overwriting. So what does AWS provide in terms of... So we'll go by elimination technique here, one by one. So let's see uh, what appears to be wrong. So option D, S3 server-side encryption. Now, encryption is for protecting the data. It's not for avoiding someone accidentally deleting it or for recovering. So this option appears to be wrong. So we can cross that out. What else appears to be wrong? A, option A, S3 lifecycle rules. S3 lifecycle rules can help manage object expiration and transition to a different storage class. They don't inherently protect against accidental deletion or overwriting. And when you get to uh, SAA or data analytics exam, this will be one of the favorite topic over there where S3 is your a live data storage, whereas obviously the cost is reflected in that. But when you don't need certain data uh, for regular usage, you then move it to, say, Glacier or a deep archive or S3 lifecycle rules can be helpful where you can say uh, a particular object, if that's not accessed for, say, 90 days, then we think uh, that uh, that qualifies to go to, say, deep archival and then move it to another storage class. So that's what S3 lifecycle rules is. Uh, one can argue that, yeah, if I move a particular object from S3 storage to, say, Glacier, deep archived area, then even if I delete this, I'll get that. So that's a very far-fetched uh, scenario, and that's never guaranteed as well. So it, it, this is an incorrect option. This is not the main purpose of S3 lifecycle rules. So we'll cross that out. The next option, which appears to be wrong, is option C, bucket policies. Now, bucket policies are used to control the access to objects and buckets, not to preserve multiple versions. So you can have uh, you know, different buckets created for your data. And on each of those buckets, you can have access policies defined where you could define who can access a certain bucket and who cannot. And that would allow controlling access to the data rather than stopping someone to accidentally delete or overwrite. So that's wrong as well. So we got rid of almost all the wrong options. So what we're left with S3 versioning, and that's the correct answer. S3 versioning's main job is to stop anybody to delete or modify anything accidentally and it protects the versions so even if somebody said deletes it you can go back to the previous version and retrieve it's like a, a live backup that's happening you, know, you never have one copy of one particular document once it gets edited instead of it overwriting what it will do is the older copy is saved the new copy is saved with another version and in case you think that you want to go for the older state of the data you can go to um, the previous version so a typical version control mechanism uh, the way it works we have seen that uh, probably on microsoft sharepoint documents as well now this is kind of taking it to a next level where anything that you have in s3 if you enable the versioning on the bucket it can be you can have multiple versions of it so s3 uh, versioning is the answer uh, in terms of the features of s3 versioning it preserves multiple versions when versioning is enabled on a bucket every time an object is updated modified deleted amazon s3 preserves a copy of previous version this means you can easily retrieve older versions of the object if needed recovery from unintended actions if an object is accidentally deleted or overwritten you can restore it to previous version basically using this uh, same use case but because it's an uh, accidental deletion you can go back to previous version to retrieve uh, the data you need protection against application errors even if an app application accidentally overwrite. It can also be uh, used this uh, feature to retain, uh, retain the previous version to ensure the data integrity. So S3 versioning is the answer of this particular question, a new topic uh, on data storage and a, a specific feature, but we've gone over like four uh, concepts here. So if you get any questions around encryption or lifecycle rules, I believe uh, S3 lifecycle rules, bucket policies and versioning, these topics could come in different format. And that's it on this question. Let's move to the next question. Question number 67, which AWS service provides the ability to manage infrastructure as a code? Please read the question. You can mark your keyword. Also try to figure out uh, what will be the correct answer here. I'm assuming you have read through the question. So here is the keyword. Uh, what is the service which is used to manage infrastructure as a code? Now, again here, we will go by elimination technique. Let's see what appears to be the most incorrect option. So option A, code pipeline. 
uh, it's wrong for me. Code pipeline is used for automating software release pipelines. It's not used for managing infrastructure as a code. This is incorrect. AWS code deploy, that's the second uh, feature on uh, in this particular question. And we have done this in one of the previous uh, episodes. Code deploy is for code deployment, as the name suggests. It's for code deployment. It does not give you ability to manage infrastructure as a code. So that's wrong. And in fact, the most obvious wrong option is option C, AWS Direct Connect. It is not anything to do with infrastructure as a code. It's a network element. It is used to establish a direct line between uh, your you know, on-premises network and AWS if you want a consistent dedicated uh, network uh, connection between your on-prem and AWS, then that's where it is used. So that's wrong as well. So all three incorrect options are eliminated. And then we come to our correct option, AWS uh, cloud formation. That's the correct answer for this. It is specifically designed for this purpose. You can have cloud form formation templates and uh, you could create uh, servers by managing them as code and you can automate the whole pipeline and create uh, various sort of servers that you need. For example, you, you are in a big corporate environment and for every new joiner, you need to have a Windows machine created with a certain specs. You can put that in code, feed it through CloudFormation and any new joiners would get a machine that they want and you don't have to keep creating images or manually create images for a new laptop or a new machine. So that's that's cloud formation for you. We have done this topic in previous episodes as well. So if you have gone through previous episodes, you'll probably hear much more aware of most of these services. Uh, they are not new here. Anyways, uh, we will go through uh, reference documentation just as a reminder. If you see cloud formation, which is the answer in this particular question, it uh, speeds up the cloud provisioning with infrastructure as a code. So it helps your uh, spinning up of uh, instances, servers, infrastructure element by help managing those as infrastructure as code. Go through it, you can see how it works, uh, use cases, etc. The next service is AWS code pipeline. Now this is essentially a DevOps uh, continuous delivery pipeline that uh, AWS provides. Again, go through the service so that you are aware of uh, if you get a question around code pipeline, this will be your answer. The next one is code deploy, the deployment tool for from AWS. So not definitely for managing infrastructure as a code. And the final one, AWS Direct Connect, which was an obvious wrong in that whole uh, group. It is used for creating a dedicated net network connection between uh, on-prem and uh, AWS. And it's basically your lease line. And uh, yeah, that's it on this question. We'll move on to the next question. Question number 68, an online gaming company needs to choose a purchasing option to run its Amazon EC2 instance for one year. The traffic is consistent and increase in traffic are predictable. The EC2 instance must be online and available without any disruption. So what will you use from available option and it has to be cost effective. All right, uh, reread the question, mark your keywords, try to see what answer you're getting. Hope you have read it uh, and done your own markups. So this is what the keywords are. We need the instance for one year. So that's a keyword and uh, it has the traffic etc. is predictable. So it's not going to scale up uh, crazily. However, uh, we want uh, the servers to be online without any disruption. So that's a keyword for you and it has to be all cost effective. We've done many questions on this particular topic of EC2 instances and you probably must have guessed the answer, but yeah, let's go through it. So if you look at the requirement of without any disruption, I think that's one. That's the one you should go for first. So the keyword without any disruption is the main one. It will. It means you cannot have spot instances because spot instances can be interrupted. If somebody bits higher than you, your instance can be taken away. So that is an option that is gone. You cannot take have it. Option D is also similar. Uh, that one is also ruled out for the same uh, reason. You cannot uh, tolerate any uh, interruption. Your spot fleet servers can be taken away from you if someone else bits higher. You'll get more servers, but again, you, the risk of disruption is always there. The second keyword here, one year, that's another one. Now. That tells us that you know on demand is going to be an expensive option. Uh, so we want a cost effective solution here. If you do on demand, then it's going to be uh, super expensive. That's the most expensive option. Obviously, you want on demand because you want you don't know uh, for how long you need a particular server, and hence you're ready to pay the premium cost for it. But we have been told here that uh, the server is needed for one year, and when you read that, it, it, something that automatically comes to your mind is reserve instances because you can reserve an instance for one to three years period and then you get almost 70-75% uh, cost discount as compared to on demand. So reserve instance is the answer. It is cheaper, almost 75% uh, cheaper as compared to on demand. So that's perfect here. If there were no other uh, criteria and you don't need it for one year, etc. And if it was just flat, uh, was the cheapest option, uh, and I don't care about any uh, interruptions, etc. Then spot instance would have been the answer there because that is 
even 90% cheaper than on-demand instance. So that's the cheapest solution. However, it can get interrupted and hence we've gone for reserve instance, which is which gives you guaranteed capacity. You have cost savings because you're committing for a longer period and it's predictable. So perfect uh, answer for this particular question. So we got our answer. Option B is the answer for this question. Let's let's look at exemptive for this particular uh, question. So whenever you see uh, that there's a requirement that uh, you need a particular instance for more than a year, you go for zone instance because it's most cost effective and guaranteed capacity. If it is against uh, the another requirement, which is here, which is uh, you cannot tolerate disruption, yeah, reserve instance is a cost effective option over spot. Let's look at uh, there is a piece of we have already done on demand reserved and spot instance in documentation in the previous video. Uh, we have seen a new topic spot fleet here so i have put a reference documentation please go through it uh, that's it on this question let's move to the next question question number 69 which aws service or feature allows a user to establish a dedicated network connection between companies on premises data center and aws cloud please read the question mark your keywords hope uh, you've done your markups uh, half the sentence of this question is group of keywords and we have done this concept just in the previous question where i because one of the option was there however uh, we'll go by elimination technique uh, all of these are new services except for option a you haven't seen these uh, option a and c we have covered in previous questions but no, not everything else so let's let's rule out the most obvious ones and then see what's the answer so what amazon route 53 option d now route 53 is a dns service it's for managing domain names routing internet traffic not establishing private network connection so uh, when you type say you're accessing amazon.com when you type amazon.com that needs to go to a particular server uh, and that server will have an ip address so your dns service is what maps your url to that particular server location or server ip address and that's what amazon route 53 is so it's an incorrect option it's not used for creating a dedicated connection between your on-prem and aws cloud so that's wrong, uh, obviously. The second one is VPN, according to me. Now, VPN can be used to connect uh, to endpoints. However, it's not a solution. It's a secure tunnel over the public internet to connect an on-prem network to the AWS cloud, but it's not a dedicated connection. So you can have a VPN created so that you can access your corporate uh, resources or public internet. And then obviously, uh, if you have a cloud uh, setup, then obviously it will go to cloud. However, it's not a dedicated connection. It will, when you initiate a VPN, it will establish, you can uh, do work, transfer data in and out. And uh, when you stop the VPN, it's gone. It's not reliable as well. It can not be used for complex and a demanding use case of connecting your company's uh, data center with AWS clouds because the data transfer requirement will be very high. So that's wrong. A AWS VPN is gone. Uh, the third option, so what we're left with is AWS Direct Connect and uh, VPC peering. Now, VPC peering is, a wrong answer here it connects two virtual private clouds within the same aws region making them appear as a single network but it doesn't involve any on-prem connection so if you have a multiple vpcs but in same aws regions and you want them the resources between them to talk to each other you can uh, do vpc pairing connect them and then you can access uh, resources from one vpc to another vpc uh, it doesn't involve on-prem as mentioned earlier so that's wrong so we have ruled out all the incorrect options and we're left with AWS Direct Connect. In fact, you probably would have guessed it straight away that if you want to connect your on-prem with AWS Cloud, you need a dedicated network connection, high bandwidth, lower latency, Direct Connect is your answer. You should go for that uh, every time. And that's your exam tip, essentially. Uh, every time you see this particular scenario where you need a dedicated solution uh, from network perspective between on-prem to AWS, go for Direct Connect. So that's our answer. Option A is the correct answer for this question and that's your exam tip as well please remember i will do a short video or multiple short videos covering all of these exam tips uh, but for now you make a note of it let's uh, quickly go through some reference documentation from aws so the first one is amazon route 53 it is a reliable and cost effective way to route in end users to internet applications uh, go through this uh, particular section from the link i'll provide you see how it works, etc. But this is your DNS service. And that's what you need to remember. You don't have to go much deeper in, in the context of CCP, AWS Cloud Practitioner exam for this service. The next one is VPC peering. And this particular uh, reference doc will explain you how VPC uh, peering connection is done, etc. Third one, AWS Direct Connect, uh, the documentation around it. Uh, it creates a dedicated network connection to AWS. You have how it works, all the benefits. Please go, go through it. It's, it's quite an important topic from exam perspective here, as well as when you get to SA or uh, further examinations, this will prove very useful. And the last one is VPN. 
we covered this as well. Go through it, see what are the use cases, etc. So that's it on this question. We'll move to the next question. Question number 70, which option is a physical location of the AWS global infrastructure? Please mark your own keyword and see if you're able to get the um, correct answer from the available options. All right, not a big question. There's only one keyword, physical location. So out of this, what is a physical location? Like what pinpoints to a particular geographical physical location? Now let's go by elimination technique again. You probably know the answer, but we want to cover all the four options that know about each of the options so that if you get any variance of this question involving any of the service, you'll be able to answer. So first one uh, I'll rule out is data sync. This is a service that helps you to, that helps you migrate data between on-prem storage and AWS storage device. So when you are doing migration, AWS data sync can help you. It's not a physical location itself. It's a service that AWS provides based on whatever global infrastructure it has. So that's wrong. Uh, AWS data sync, as the name suggests, it will help you sync data between on-prem and storage, AWS storage devices. But that's not the correct answer for this particular question. The next one, uh, Amazon Connect. That's option C. That's again an incorrect answer. It's essentially Amazon's version of a contact center. It's a cloud-based contact center. It's not a physical location, so Amazon Connect is also wrong. Option D, AWS organization. That's in fact uh, the most incorrect option here. As we know, AWS organization is a service that helps you manage multiple AWS accounts in a single organization, and it's not a physical location. Its usage is to organize your accounts better. If you have hundreds of uh, AWS accounts used in your organization, which a typical big corporate would have, then you can organize them. Uh, you can that's one advantage of you know ease of managing uh, your accounts the second advantage you get is uh, all the usages across all the accounts get aggregated and then you can get discount because you are hitting volumes uh, when you add up uh, usage from all the accounts so you get uh, volume discounts you get and then you have consolidated bill as well that is another simplicity instead of getting say for example you have 100 accounts in your organization with AWS, uh, if you don't use organization, you will get 100 bills or invoices. Whereas when you use organization and you organize all of these accounts under one umbrella, the bill you will get is a single consolidated bill. You will get billing discounts because you're hitting various levels of volumes and uh, it's much more economical for you. So it's incorrect, uh, not, not an answer for this particular question. We are left with option B and that's the correct answer here. Uh, AWS region is basically a physical location around the world where Amazon has grouped its data center. Each region will provide a complete independent environment for running uh, AWS services. This means you can choose to deploy your resources, the region that is closest to your user that meets your compliance requirement as well. If you know the building blocks of AWS, you have your data centers, you have availability zones, and then region, that's the hierarchy. Uh, a region will have typically minimum two uh, availability zones and there'll be more redundancy within an availability zone, you will have data center. Let's uh, quickly check uh, some reference documentation from AWS as well on this topic. Uh, in terms of final answer on this, option B is your final answer for this particular question. And let's quickly check the documentation. So here is some reference documentation from AWS, which talks about regions and availability zones. You will find the link for this in video description. Currently looking at North America, and you can see these green dots are the regions, uh, anything, if there is an upcoming one, it will be marked on red dot, which we cannot see. This is the Europe version of uh, AWS data centers. You can so that's it on regions. And because we've seen a new service, Amazon Connect is another service. It, it's it's basically a cloud-based uh, contact center. So that's it on this particular question. And I believe that was the last question of this particular episode. This is Exam Tricks and Tips. You're watching AWS.